Marquis Sagan was out for the year. He saw another specialist. He's going to try to go and wait till the end of the season and uh, have that surgery. Whether he can or not, we don't know. But to see him out there today, that's what, that's what the plan is. So cool. That's good for us, and hopefully he can go. Uh, as you know, we got a great challenge in Louisville this week. You know, I had the opportunity to work with Charlie Strong for three years. I got great respect for him as a coach. Uh, he's done a nice job with that program, and he'll have him well prepared to work and do the same. Uh, they're an excellent football team. Uh, you know, playing two quarterbacks. They got Bridgewater, who was there, who's a true freshman that was there in the spring. And uh, he, uh, Stein, got hurt a little bit in that Kentucky game. The kid went in and did well. We also got Victor Anderson, tailback with the rookie year in the uh, Big East three years ago, was playing well for him. And defensively, being around Charlie, they're no different this year. 50% of the time, they're going to bring pressure. And that's what they're doing now. And uh, so we got to be prepared to make sure we can handle pressure on Saturday. What's the plan you know, if Aiken can't go? Who? The plan if Aiken can't go is the same thing we did Saturday. We okay. take a roll with Delbert and you know, Sparrow um, went and played well Saturday. He played very really well. And uh, he's got to continue to play well. Uh, you know, with some of the, you know, Jeremiah Taylor may have to go and play some three technique also, and, and Trevor Black some three technique. And, uh, but we'll, we'll manage, uh, you know, roll Delbert, Bull, and, and Sparrow, but the three guys we rolled in there on Saturday, you know, I was pleased with the way Sparrow played. Any, any chance of Jarquez Jar Sanders? No. Because you've seen a lot of Teddy Bridgewater. You he's, playing high. he's an excellent player in high school. He's you know, very athletic. Uh, he can throw it. He can run it. Uh, you know, it looks like they're trying to ease him into something you know, a little bit. But you know, Stein got hurt Saturday. He's pressed him into more, act, uh, into more uh, reps and snaps. And the kid did very well. They also <coughs> play. Uh, they also play the other big uh, quarterback. It's also a tailback in that wildcat formation to create some issues for you. So he's, he's also a good player. You, know, you don't see that much. It, it, it was all the rage. That formation was all the rage there for a while, and it's kind of died out, hasn't it? Yeah, it still is with Louisville. I mean, they got a kid rushed for well over 100 yards on Saturday. And uh, he played tailback in. It was in that wildcat set. So he's a big guy that we have to be able to But otherwise, yet, uh, it doesn't seem like you see it much. It doesn't seem much. It's like a fad. How do Teddy Bridgewater and Rakeem Cato kind of compare? Uh, you know, they're very similar as far as they're both freshmen. They both you know, can throw, make all the throws. I think the one thing that Bridgewater has over Cato at this point, he was there for spring ball, and it doesn't make a difference. And, uh, you know, so he's probably about three months ahead of him as far as the learning curve because he also has spring ball. But uh, he's, he's not, they're both excellent players, good, good young prospects. Uh, again, you face another uh, top 25 defense in, in Louisville. Uh, Guys are getting used to these by now. <laughs> Unfortunately, they are. Charlie's does a good deal. One thing we'll do is they will do to be able to stop the run. Uh, they, they've done that well. And, uh, and I think they're giving up like 271 yards per game or something. Charlie's does a good job there because, like I said, they, they, they're, they're constantly coming after you, bringing pressure. Uh, over 50% of the time, they're bringing somebody. So you have to do a good job of preparation this week to make sure we pick up all the fields. Well, along those lines, what have you got to do to? Get your running game, running game started up again. We got to block a little better. I mean, we got to, you know, we just, it wasn't just our offensive line. You know, our quarterbacks got to make some better reads at times and, uh, and do some things. But uh, you know, we just have to. You know, we got some issues we need to clean up. And uh, you know, it, to be honest with you, the offensive line blocked you know, Virginia Tech a little better, probably more than I thought they even would at times. And, uh, you know, we just got to get better and, uh, and get, get better work every day to get better as a football team. Because uh, you know, I've said it a thousand times, but it's, it's true. We can't become one. Is it is some of that on the running backs too? No, it, it's on everything. It's on all of us. It's on okay. the entire offense. You know, we just got we have to go out there. That's one thing Kato was talking about yesterday. Is he still trying to figure out when to give, when to hold? And he's still trying to work that with him. Well, yeah, absolutely. <coughs> I mean, he, 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 uh, he's got to, you know, he's got to get better. And he's just, he's a young guy. He's learning. And uh, unfortunately, there's some learning, uh, growing pains we've got to go through with him. But he's got to get better quick because we don't have any. We just we've got to. Every week we're, we're, we have a new challenge. He has to help us in certain areas. And he's got to, to, he's got to speed up that learning curve. Let's talk about your connections with, with Charlie Strong. How far you got to go back? Charlie's great. You know, I just Charlie, we go back a long ways. But I mean, actually working with you for three years. You know, Charlie's a guy that deserved to be head coach for a long time. And uh, I was happy and proud of him when he got that job. And uh, he'll do a tremendous job. Him and his wife, Vicky, are both really good friends of mine, Diane and myself. And, uh, he's, he deserves everything. How often do you guys talk to each other? Uh, not as much in the last month or so because we're playing each other, but uh, quite a bit. It's always a good friend. You 
uh, working on the same side of the ball as him at Florida. What, what can we expect out of that defense, that Louisville defense? Well, they're going to be very, very aggressive. Uh, he was when he was in Florida. He's, uh, and like I said, you know, prior to he's, he's going he's to come after us, uh, especially the young quarterback. I think a lot of people in the back of their mind, they think they can put pressure. And, and now times on Saturday, it hurt Virginia Tech. The pressure hurt a little bit there towards the end of the half because Cato made some, made some things happen. But you know, Charlie's not going to change. I'm sure he's going to put pressure. He's, he's very aggressive. Talking to Cato, he seems to assume he's going to get blitzed every week. I'd say he's, uh, he's probably right. For a little bit about the, the staff you're on there for, I think a lot of these guys are going on to other places and are being successful. Uh, did you kind of pick up on how talented the staff you were on there when you were there? Well, you didn't. You know, I know Dan Mullins at Mississippi State's done well a year ago. Uh, okay. uh, of course, Dazio's at Temple's done a nice job, uh, you know, and Charlie at Louisville. So. There was some really good, you know, Greg Madison down the D coordinator at, uh, at Michigan. That was a good defensive staff. Too. Chuck Eater's the D coordinator at Temple right now. He's leading the country in total defense. So that was an excellent staff. And, uh, it was just to be part of it. So, what were your impressions of Jermaine Holmes his first start at middle linebacker? Well. You know, I thought he went in there and uh, he didn't always know where he's going, but he goes there and makes plays. And, uh, it's like, you know, I think there's two areas, Chuck and. You gotta coach a heck out of a linebacker, chances are you won't have one. You know, point him in the right direction, get him lined up, tell him to go make the plays. It's kinda of the same thing on running back. You know, you get a great with tailback. You don't tell him which cuts to make, you just get him lined up, tell him to go make the plays. And I think Jermaine, you know, I think he's gonna be an excellent player for us. With Holmes in the middle, he had to move Tyson to the outside, you think he held up. You know, Tyson's battled some things right now with some injuries and uh, but he's you know, Tyson does a good job at getting our defense lined up and the problem with Tyson is Tyson, he, has a hard, he can't go in and play 70 or 80 snaps. He just can't do that. you got to get Tyson out there some and, and get Calvin and some of those other guys in there. But Tyson, Tyson's a good, you know, provides great leadership in there and uh, he helps get those guys lined up. Say he, he helped, uh, was able to help Holmes on the field, was he not? Well, oh, he is. He is. He helps Holmes on the field. Any progress on uh, on Hunter? Uh, we're still, you know, Chuck gets the deal, but you know, those, those um, they do those surgeries on that, on that meniscus. There's a drop. There's a certain date that they give when they can come back, and you know, it's we're still a couple weeks away with that. The problem you got with that is if you go back and go back too early and tear that meniscus again, it's you can't repair it. So, the thing we have to do is I don't put that kid in jeopardy. About Rat, was Rat, is Rouse's back again? Yeah, yes. Can Demetrius Evans come back this year? Yes, at some point. Some point. And what about Craig Wilkins? What happened there? Uh, he's just maybe backed up. He should be okay. Okay. Two minutes ago, Kale executed so well. Obviously, you'd like to see that kind of offense, but you can't run that all the time. Will you re kind of reevaluate how often you get into that? Uh, you know, Virginia Tech at, at that point had given some zero coverage and some max blitzes. And, you know, Cato ended up finding, you know, got the ball to the right people. We heard him under the pressure, and they were pressures at that point. And, you know, we had, you know, we came back out in the second half and tried to get into some other up tempo, you know, and it didn't quite uh, go as smooth as it did there in the first half. But we have to continue to do that. We have to continue to try to go up tempo and mix some things up to try to get into one and get our offense on the field. Talk about getting uh, Troy Evans involved in the offense. He didn't. He didn't touch the ball on offense last game. We need to. He's a good player, and uh, you know the one, you know the one thing with kickoff returns with him and Booker both back there. I think that gives us a spark back there, and that's one part of our kicking game has been really good as far as helping us with the goal positions. And, but you're right. We need to get Troy Evans involved because he's a playmaker. You got a guy on offense that can make plays with him. We got to get the ball in his hands. I know last year, about consistency issues with Dobson. It seems like this year he's kind of bringing it down every week. Four touchdowns the last three games. He's, he was, you know, he's done a nice job. He's been more consistent, more to make a play. But that's what good players do. And we need him to be a good player every week because he's one guy that, uh, that we have that can go make plays on that offense. How does that help a, a young quarterback to have that weapon out there? It helps tremendously. We need to do we got a guy that can do it. helps the confidence. And, and Aaron's, Aaron's done a nice job taking him. He can be a really good player. You go into this thinking about which quarterback's going to play for them. Does it matter? 
you know, I think Charlie has come out and said, correct me if I'm wrong, Steins is still the starter. He's not going to be out because of the injury. But I would guess, if I don't guess, I know we'll see both of them. And they played them both all the time. Bridgewater, again, went in and did a nice job at Kentucky game. And, uh, so I'm sure we'll see Stein, but I'm sure we'll also see Bridgewater. But we'll prepare for both. And there's not much difference in between the two teams. There's a team where the tight end has emerged as the weapon in on the pass game. Had a big two. He's about 6'7", six, 6'8". Six, can run. Chow Chester. And, uh, he's athletic. And he's, you know, not only do they play him as a test tight end, but they'll flex him out. So at times, you know, you think they're 11 personnel, but they'll be 10 personnel as far as the line will go. Because they'll flex him in space. 